gonna have a look here at moments okay a moment is a, a turning force and it's calculated as the force applied at the perpendicular distance from the pivot point so if you remember force is measured in newtons distance is measured in meters so therefore if you multiply these two together you get moment if you multiply the units together you get newton meters so the units for moments are newton meters so in this example we've got a wheelbarrow and the first thing you've got to do is identify the point of rotation which is the pivot point so here that's going to be the wheel the point around which everything else rotates uh, we've got two forces acting here. We have the weight of the wheelbarrow and contents, which let's make up a number, make it quite heavy. It's going to be 500 newtons. Now, we're trying to figure out in this case, what is the force that we're applying to the uh, handles here in order to lift up this heavy load? The whole point of using a wheelbarrow is to reduce uh, the effective force that you need to produce uh, by multiplying the force using this long lever, the handles and let's get some distances here so i'm going to assume that from the pivot we're 0.5 meters away and the handle is going to be 1.5 meters away from the pivot point now you notice we said you were using the perpendicular distance here uh, this is just to simplify things a bit for this example because uh, although the force is likely to be applied more in this sort of direction uh, the weight will be acting straight downwards and we'd be interested in the weight that was acting, the component of weight that would be acting in this direction. And ultimately the problem would be the same, just the math would be a little bit trickier, a bit more inconvenient for this. So we, in order, uh, the minimum force that you need to use would need to have equal moments in either side. Okay, and by that I mean the moments acting uh, clockwise would be equal to the moments that are acting anti-clockwise. So F would be need to equal uh, to, so that would be the, F would be the one that would be going uh, clockwise. So if you kept this F going around the pivot, it would go around clockwise. <clears throat> so um, yeah, F would be need to equal, uh, F times 1.5, that's the distance from the pivot point, would need to be equal to 500 newtons uh, times 0.5. So rearranging this, we would get F equals 500 times 0 0.5 is 250. Okay, divided by 1.5, this should give us the force uh, of uh, 166 uh, repeating uh, newtons. So in the question, uh, the least we had was well, one sig fig, but it's not really significant. So I'm going to give this to a two sig fig. So that's roughly 170 newtons. So that'd be a pretty acceptable answer there. So instead of having to carry around 500 newtons in your arms, you only have to apply 170 newtons if you're using a wheelbarrow. So fundamentally, it comes down to this. The moments clockwise and anti-clockwise need to be equal in order to lift this wheelbarrow up. Here's another example, it's a bit more tricky. Uh, we've got three objects either side of a seesaw and let's put in some distances. Let's say this is 0.5 meters. Uh, let's say this is 2.2 meters and well, I don't know, let's have 2.0 meters here. And we're trying to figure out what this force is here that's acting down the way. So it's usually handy to have forces drawn in to show which way they're acting and um, or draw a free body force diagram. In this case, I think this using this principle really helps. So the moments on either side of the pivot must be equal. So this mystery force is helping to create a moment acting clockwise, whereas here these two are combining to produce an anti-clockwise moment. So on the right hand side here we'll have the force times the distance, and on this side we'll have the force one, which is 200 newtons times 2.2, and you've got an additional moment, so you add them together, of uh, force two, 100 newtons, 
times 0.5 meters away. So if we have F here, that is two meters away, and on this side we have 200 times 2.2, that's this force up here, and if we have another moment which is coming from this 100 newtons acting 0.5 away from here, uh, we can then deduce what our force might be. So here we have, uh, this will be 50 newton meters plus 200 times 2.2 will be 440 newton meters and that will be equal to F times 2. Two meters. So that basically means that F, and if we move, if we divide this side by two and this side by two, we'll get 490 divided by two, which is 245 newtons, will be the size of this force up here.